Hi everyone, Niall here. Welcome back to the AC20 Vim channel. Today I'm going to talk to you about my preferred way of bringing Excel native data directly into the Revit environment. Not to be confused with the methodology for taking Revit data into Excel and reintegrating it. That's a different process. This is how to take the Excel native data, such as just our generic spreadsheet, select, you know, a part of that or a portion of that that you want to represent in the Revit environment and reintegrate it directly and then reload it when there's alterations and that kind of thing. All right. So it's it's it's, it's a one-way process rather than a two-way process. Um so look, I won't delay too much longer. I'm Niall, this is 20 BIM. As always, if you like this content, like, comment, subscribe, tell the algorithm that you'll put up with me for a bit longer at least. And um as always, all the resources listed in the video are available down below. Make sure to check them out. I would say that I am using the table gen tool created by DieRoots. I recommend you go check out DieRoots or DRoots, DieRoots, I think it is. Um DieRoots.com. They're they're an exceptional company and the way that they produce high quality Revit utilities for free as kind of a, a you know to increase their footfall and, and let them be known is both effective but also very generous. So I recommend that if you're downloading something that you, you support them in a way as well. Okay. Um anyway, I won't delay any more or defer. Let's get into it. So what we're going to do very quickly is if you look at the sheet here, this sheet is a full list of the Revit custom keyboards um, shortcuts, which I generated there. Um, and on, you can actually get hold of that by signing up to the newsletter on the first link down below. OK, um, but this basically is every default keyboard shortcut. And on the right hand side, you can see some of my recommended custom ones. OK, um, and the way I created this was by creating each of these, let's say, data sets. So each column was its own independent sheet in, in Excel. And then I assigned the ranges to these sheets and I was able to import them en masse, basically. And I'm going to go through the process of how I did that, okay? Um, just so you know, outside of this, the actual Revit file I'm going to be working on, as well as the XML custom keyboard mapping, let's say, that I utilize day to day and all the other resources based around this, are also available from the second link down below from the Buy Me A Coffee support page if you're interested in that. So looking on screen here, I'm going to look at, um, but we're going to just pick uh, snap shortcuts here for argument's sake, okay? So I'm going to go and create a snap shortcuts um, link, let's say, into a Revit file, okay? So what I want to do is, first of all, direct you to where you can get hold of the DieRoots utilities, okay? So if you go to DieRoots.com, um, and then you can go to, so just go back, you go to dieroots.com and then you go to the Revit add-ins button there. You will see that they have a, a host of, um, of utilities already here. Okay. Uh, there's table gen and there's sheet link. And both of these are two methods for integrating Excel that dieroots have produced. What I would say is sheet link, just so you understand the difference. Sheet link is the way to take your Revit data and export it into an Excel document so that let's say the instance type parameters can be altered in the Excel environment and then brought back in override the the reporting schedules in Revit. Okay. So that's the power of sheet link. But for this one, what you want to do is you want to go to table gen, you're going to go into details here, and then you're just going to uh, press your free download and you're going to install as per normal. It's for 2018, 2019, 2020, and 2021, and 2022. So all of those versions are supported, okay? And I would recommend wholly that you donate to them and support them for what they've done because they've created some amazing tools for us, okay? So looking on screen here, we have our Revit environment, and I want to go ahead and bring in this Snap Shortcuts dialog, okay? So going to the DieRoots tab on top, I'm going to show that you can see that I've got Table Gen installed here already, okay? And when I press Table Gen, it last prompt me for updates. I'm not going to get the updates at the moment. I haven't opened it in a, a day or two. <laughs> okay. So remind me tomorrow. And you can see that I've got this whole host of um, views already set up. Okay. And this basically is the backbone of the sheet you see behind you, whereby each one of these have been brought in and then they were modified at different points to keep the table up to date. And then you're able to reload them. Okay. So what I want to do now is I want to actually create a new table. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Excel document here and I'm going to go to snap shortcuts and I'm going to duplicate this view. So I'm going to say move or copy and I'm going to create a copy of, I'm going to create a copy of our snap shortcuts. Okay. I'm going to press okay. 
I'm just going to rename that um, map copy for reference. Okay. And the thing to note is that the dilutes tool picks up on a name range within Excel. Okay. So you have to actually designate a range within your sheets for it to work. So just to show you how this works, looking at the custom keyboard mapping um, sheet here, okay, in Excel, you can see when I've kind of got this gray kind of indicator around these elements. And when I select this range, you can see that it's actually given the name. It's the recommended custom Revit keyboard shortcut range, okay. And that's a region that I assigned in Excel for the Dilutes plugin in Revit to pick up and bring in. Because otherwise, it can't identify the data. You may have a lot of data on one sheet and what you actually want to do is just take out subsections of that data this is the methodology without by the way this is how essentially that they control that uh, that function rather than just have the whole sheet dump in on you and then you have to completely change the formatting of your excel just to get the revit data out that would be counterintuitive and, and dysfunctional so far as i could tell so going back um, i'm just going to i'm just going to go so we've got our um, snap copy there I'm just going to save this document, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to our Revit environment here, okay? And I'm gonna press Add Tables from the Table Gen, okay? So again, you go to Diroots Table Gen, I'm gonna press Add Tables, okay? I'm going to navigate to my Excel. So you can see, I'm just gonna go and press the keyboard shortcuts there on the desktop, okay? And you can see on the worksheet, it's gonna prompt which worksheet, AKA which tab from the Excel environment you want to select. So I'm going to navigate down to snaps copy. Okay. And then you can see that we've got the worksheet region. And again, because I duplicated the region, this here is called snaps shortcut region. So if I wanted to create a new region, for example, I can, I can, I'm going to get rid of that. Okay. Sorry, I could probably rename that. So let's say, imagine I was doing this for the first time. This is how you do this the first time. You drag select the selection that you want. And then I'm just going to say selection example, underscore example. I'm going to press save. I'm going to go back to the Revit environment there. And I'm going to just stop that for a moment. Close that dialog for a moment. I'm going to go back in just to give it a chance to be able to, to relocate the information or reload the information. So give it a moment. Um, so I'm going to go to add tables. I'm going to select the Excel file as I did previously from the desktop. We're going to go to our snap copy. It's actually still going to prompt the same name. Actually, it's, it's okay. Don't worry about that. But we can actually we can describe whether or not we want a legend view or a schedule view or a drafting view for this. Okay. But because of the formatting of this and it is still tabled. I want to bring into a schedule view. You can actually dictate which one you want. Um, it can be very powerful as a legend. It can be very powerful as a draft view. It really depends on the function that you want to actually leverage. Nine times out of 10, I'm using schedule view for something like this. But if you have something that's much more diagrammatic that you want to bring in, aka you've got, let's say, your Gantt charts or something that you want to bring into the Revit environment, or you've got a, a pie chart or something like that showing distribution or something like that, you can actually integrate these as a drafting view or a legend view and take in that information as well, okay? So I'm just going to press um, Schedule View in this instance. I'm going to press OK. And you can see now that that's been created. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to click on that one that's been created. And you can see that all the ones that have previously been created, okay, have a tick. Okay, whereas this one here shows that it still needs to be created in the model. So what we need to do then is we, we select the cell on the left hand side in this window. We press Apply. And if you look over here on the right hand side, we get snap copy 001 after being created, okay? So I can close that. And then I can literally just get our snap copy and drag it into view. And you can see it maintains the exact same formatting as the information that we had in the Excel. Now, you may need to, if it's cropping in a certain manner or something like that, you can still go in and change some of the, the, the setting out, let's say, of, of these elements. So you could maybe drag that down there if the text wasn't uh, wrapping fully. Or for example, you can see down here, SOR, the text isn't wrapping fully. You can still go, so the, you might have a neatening exercise to do, okay? Now, that's brilliant. That's 
basically the function in a nutshell, how to bring it in and how simple it is, okay? But let's say we want to catch updates with this, okay? So we can say down here, I've got change listed under the uh, the snaps window, okay? And obviously that's not change, okay? So let's say we want our, um, we want to change that value to what the actual value is for the perpendicular snaps, okay? So I'm gonna go in here and, um, off the top of my head, I can't remember it. I'm just going to put in PE for the moment. <laughs> but I'll come back to you on that one. Um, and I'm going to press save. Okay. So I changed that value in the Excel environment. And now I can go back to the Revit environment. I can go back to table gen. Give it a moment to open. And much the same way as the linking utilities work in, in Revit, whereby you can, you can reload the latest. I can essentially select that, right click and press update or direct it somewhere else, say update from, if I want to pick up a different Excel that's been developed differently, okay? And looking at the value that says change down here, I'm gonna press apply. And what you're gonna notice two things happen, okay? So PE is updated, okay? But there is one kind of negative to this workflow that um, I haven't found a solution to. And that is that while it's picking up the change, the formatting alterations that we've made in Revit to make it more legible, aka the elements that were being clipped here that the text wasn't wrapping around, um, that formatting was undone. So you would actually have to go back in and do this, okay? Um, now, the formatting in the Excel environment is correct. So it's not an Excel-driven issue. It's got to do with the presentation of the elements in Revit and how it, tranks, it, it transfers that information, okay? So that's one of the negatives and probably the only negative to this workflow is that, yes, you can update it, but you will have to go in and just do a sanity check on the formatting after you do it. But compared to historic methods where you would utilize kind of maybe something like a, um, sorry, cut out the video there by accident. I know historically people used to use AutoCAD a lot for this process in the early days of Revit, whereby they'd use the, the Excel link to AutoCAD, and then they'd then reference the AutoCAD drawing into Revit. And from a presentation perspective, that was a nightmare because your, your text styles are typically different, your line styles would have been different, you wouldn't have had any editability within Revit whatsoever. Um, that's just a really just broken and, and roundabout way of doing it. So this methodology here is, is far superior so far as I can tell. Um, there are other utilities that do this. The Roots are not the only one. Um, I like the Diroots business model. I also like the interfaces compared to others. They're very simple to understand. Outside of that, the other tools, I've only got a few of them listed here. But in the next video, if you'd like, I'll go through SheetLink and how SheetLink works for exporting Revit scheduled data from the Revit environment out so that it can, certain elements of it at least, the, the instance um, parameters, can be edited freely, let's say, by a project manager or a senior architect who's not Revit, um, let's say, proficient, or uh, you know yourself, like maybe um, one of the senior mechanical and electrical engineers who don't necessarily work in the Revit environment themselves, they could go in and change the instance parameters within the Revit um, exported Excel document from SheetLink, and you can then reintegrate that directly into Revit and it'll override the instance properties for the families within Revit. So that was a very quick introduction to my preferred way of bringing Excel data into Revit. Okay, so it's the die roots or D roots. I don't know. I think it's die roots uh, table gen tool specifically. Okay. Um, again, there are others. I'd like to hear about the others. Um, there's others that kind of even show the Excel formatting within the window in Revit. And that's all well and good. Um, you know, yeah, I, I know what I know. <laughs> um, but other than that, if you have any questions, please let me know down below. Make sure to join the uh, the Discord um, chat that we have. I think it's maybe the third or fourth link down below as well. And I'll also have a link to the Die Roots plugin page for this tool specifically in the description as well. So make sure to go there and check it out. So as always, I hope you liked it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff to support the channel and the video and tell the algorithm that, you know, you'll put up with me for a bit longer. And uh, yeah, I'll see you for the next one. Go on, take care of yourselves. Keep safe.